Sen në tëllëmi dhe Koran. And I gotta say this, you have the book by Ephraim Karsh, Islamic Imperialism. Yes, I do. And I encourage anyone to get It's that book. book. Uh, and, and what they say is, these verses, not only uh, did it benefit Muhammad and all of that, and, 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 and supposedly it's revelation, if you look at it from an Islamic point of view, but it's very practical because what was the GDP of the desert of Arabia? They didn't make nothing. nothing. You know, they, 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 their GDP, by the way, came from all of these pilgrims coming to their house of polytheistic worship. Mm -hmm. And he and, removed all the gods. So there's no gods to go back and, to check on, to uh, visit. <laughs> you, you, you may, I'm going to have to bring it up. The callers yeah. are going to be upset with But Surah 929, right? 929, it, yes. Well, well, what precedes that is Surah 928. Mm -hmm. Now, 929 says, Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold forbidden what has been forbidden by Allah and His messenger, mm -hmm. nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the uh, Ayutu al-Kitab, those who've been given the book, that is, the Jews and the Christians. Absolutely. Until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. So people say, now that, that says Muslims mm -hmm. are to fight, you and me, Jews, right. Christians, mm -hmm. until we pay them a tax, right. feel ourselves humiliated, made small. Now, they say, oh, you take it out of context. Well, just for you Muslims, I'm going to give you the context right now. The context is the previous verse, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Let's take a quick look at that, verse 28. O ye who believe, truly the pagans are unclean, so let them not, after this year of theirs, approach the sacred mosque. So well, they cannot about? go visit their gods, they cannot get close to the holy site. Right. They're not going to be there. The income is zero. See? Right. Because the income of, of the Meccans was from all these people coming and doing pilgrimage. There is no oil there. Right? right? Yeah. But now a verse comes down, no longer let the polytheists come. Now it's just going to be Muslims, right? Mm -hmm. So now look what, but, but Allah, he takes care of his, his boys. Yeah. Now, take a, now take a look what he did. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, and, and if you fear poverty, right? Because as soon as they yeah. say, well, there's no income. If you <laughs> fear will. poverty, soon will Allah enrich you if he wills out of his bounty. What is the For bounty Allah bounty? is all knowing and all wise. Yeah. And then the very next verse is fight, go and fight. And, and, and so where do they make their money? The By going and making war, taking slaves, mm -hmm. though, as you pointed out, those they didn't want to keep for concubines to have sex, they sold human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Take their plunder, kill the men, take everything they own, including their women, have sex with them, and, uh, and sell them. That's where the money had to come from. So basically, jihad is Islamic imperialism. It is, it is. It is a, the way of life. And, 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 of life. and one more thing, and, and, and we've changed the show already here, but, <laughs> but, but why did they have to continuously move outward? Well, the Quran says to, right? It says fight with them until there's no fitna, until there's no, 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 uh, no uh, people that are against Islam. But once you conquer a region, yeah, we need to get the callers. I know. They're, they're, they're having a revolt in the technical department. But <laughs> we'll be right there. But, but, but check this out now. Once you conquer a region, right, mm -hmm. you, you immediately have exhausted what you can exploit them from. So how do you get more money? You've got to conquer the next region. Right. And then once you've exploited and exhausted what, uh, you know, their women and everything else, what, because you, you're not going to farm. No. These jihadists weren't going to go be The only Brown. jobs they have mm. in Muhammad mm. days, the only jobs they have is the sweat of their face by swinging the sword. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> only, and Muhammad did not teach your children farm agriculture and, and buying and selling. He said, teach your children, the boys, swimming, the riding of the camel on horse, the uh, using of the spear, and the using of the, uh, what do you call this? Bo -Nell. Bo -Nell. Bo -Nell. Uh -huh. That's the four things Muhammad wanted them to learn. Mm. Because that's what they're going to use to sweat, to make their income, fighting, war. My goodness. We got, a, we got a lot of callers. Uh, I hope some of you have seen a whole new face of Islam that you've never seen before. I pray there's some, <laughs> some black Americans who've been watching. But let's I take the so. next caller right now. <laughs> Welcome, you're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Hello, you're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Hello. Yes, hello. Thank you for waiting. Go right ahead. You're on the air. No problem. My question... Yeah, no problem. I'm just listening to what you're talking about. My question, can I... Go, can go you ahead. Can tell me how is Muhammad, uh, he married Aisha. Aisha, she was nine years old, and she's a baby. I mean, how he married her? Yeah, the Hadith says that he married her at six years old and uh, waited to consummate the marriage at nine years old. 
This is the source of never-ending uh, embarrassment to Muslims, and they always try to change it and say, oh, no, she was 18. Or well, she, she was 28. She was 28. <laughs> Uh, uh, I so thought she was 82. No, no. Well, well, I, I heard, you know, a good interpretation I heard of that. Yeah. Muhammad married her when she was six because, not for sex. Yeah. He married because she was a very wise young lady. Okay. And to so, so, so she can memorize the Quran. She, so she would memorize the Quran. Muhammad never had sex with Aisha. But she said, he married me when I was six, had sex with me when I was nine, and he died when I was 18. So I don't know how he married her when she was 28 if he died when she was 18. And this was his favorite wife. She does not lie. Yeah. She yeah. tells the truth. Yeah. Anyway. And if they tell me she's, she forgot, she make a mistake in the numbers, I don't know how, how wise woman he got. She can't remember when did he marry her. Pretty wise at six, though. Six years old. Six she's years old. He was only 51. It, it was Abu Bakr's daughter, right? Yes. yes. The first leader And Abu Bakr refused. Yeah. He said, you're my brother. He said, but Allah told me. Allah oh. dropped a, a blanket from heaven of silk, and she was in the blanket. Oh. Three times Allah want, want him to marry Aisha. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, That's indeed. in the hadith. Yes, indeed. Oh, man. Yes, indeed. Hadith is something else, I <laughs> yeah. tell you. Okay. All right. Let's take the next caller right now. Welcome. You're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Hello? Yes, hello. You're on the air. Go right ahead. Yeah. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Okay. Great. Well, how about you? Oh, I'm doing all right. I just have a comment. I, once I read a paragraph about, a, a, like, a detail about Muhammad's sex life, Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, like, uh, we should be grateful to him that he, he's the one who invented the uh, tongue kiss, like, 1,400 years ago for the French, you know what I mean? I, I didn't uh, know that. I didn't know that. Uh, as yeah. a matter of fact, you know, I don't want to get in, into areas that we shouldn't be as Christians, but uh, I understand that in the Hadith, there are many different sexual practices that are uh, displayed and Muhammad is uh, is involved in them. You want me to get started on that? No, 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 no. <laughs> just, that, is one call, call her, just, call her, thank just. you for, for pointing that out. Did you have something else you'd like to share? Uh, actually, that's, that's all I wanted to say. But I, uh, I was wondering if I can get, like, uh, an English translation, like the real translation of the Quran. This, me, this uh, is the best one that I've seen. Now, it's not the best that you can get because uh, Osama's not the best, but no. <laughs> this is from Osama Abdullah. Osama, Osama Abdullah. <laughs> no. Uh, Osama, tell them about this Quran, it's, it's where simple. they can get if it. If you go online, thestraightway.org, thestraightway.org, you'll be able to get yourself a copy of the generous Quran. Osama Doc Duke, and, yes. uh, but no, honestly, uh, there's, some, there's now more than 20 English versions of the Quran. Uh, this one, is, is not only is it, is it a good translation, but even more importantly for a Christian, it's filled with headings and subheadings from a Christian uh, apologetic standpoint. Like, for example, in Surah 19, verse 1, before that it says the heading, the story of Zechariah and John the Baptist, this story is copied from the Bible, but it is corrupted. See Luke 1. This is just an example. So, I recommend this highly to anyone uh, Christian who wants a Quran that, that will help reveal the true meaning. But however, I'll tell people this, don't get a Quran unless you're going to engage Muslims with it. Otherwise, keep the book out of your house. Don't, don't fool with it. Amen. Thank you, dear caller, for calling. God bless you. Now, you've got to tell us again how to get that. How, how do you tell, tell your people how, how to get simple. this? It's very simple. You go to thestraightway.org, thestraightway.org. And you are, it's on the first base. And what is the actual title of this book? The Generous Quran. The Generous Quran, Quran by Osama Doc Duke. Is your name associated with it? On yes, it's, it's like, all... like, Can you get it on Amazon? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. All but right. soon. Soon we will. So, so is this, are you just trying, is this a translation you've done? Yes, sir. Okay, don't you, be humble with yeah, it. I am trying Just come to on be, and tell us. It is my translation. Is, no, if you made this translation, yes. why didn't I get a gift of this? You can, have, first brother, you can have one. Yeah. That's easy. Okay. Praise Brother, God. Anyway, get him to sign it. <laughs> next question. Next question. Well, I really have some hadith I need to cover here. We, we got a lot more callers. Yes, um, you know what? Let, let's take one more caller and then we'll go to the hadith. Okay? okay. Let's take the next caller right now. Welcome. You're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Uh, this is me again, uh, Pastor Joseph. Uh, he, yes. Go right ahead, Brother uh, CP, but Pastor please Pastor be, Pastor be Pastor brief Pastor if you, you can. Yeah. Uh, first, if, as long as you are talking about books, you know, uh, I, I want to mention that I have my book is going to come maybe next month. It's called The Deception of Allah. It's, it, it, you know, it's extremely uh, full of information and especially answering what it's called the miracles of the Quran. 
uh, proving that all of them they are false one by one. And actually, I'm speaking about slavery, women rights, everything with details, a lot of details. Okay, so uh, CP, when, when are you going to come on ABN and uh, and help us promote your book? <laughs> I, I promise you, let me, CB, let me stop here. If he will not show up on this TV station, I'm not going to publish his book. Oh, okay. If, <laughs> if, if, he, if he won't come, we're going to forbid him. We're Forget cut about him publishing your book. Bye-bye, CB. You better show up here or you have no room with us, man. Yeah, this is the problem. He is the publisher. I'm stuck now. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, yeah. It is life, man. Well, well, well you need to, uh, hey, CP, uh, honestly, you, you need to call these people here at ABN. Uh, uh, they, they hear you, and, and their mouth is watering. They want you to come and, and, uh, and be more on board with us. I would be honored to be there. You know, I want to add to what you mentioned about discrimination. You know, I want to, first of all, you know, slavery is not about white slavery to black. This is very false. Mm -hmm. Like the nation of Israel itself, was enslaved by the Egyptian, and Osama is an Egyptian, and the Israeli was enslaved by the Babylon, and they are white. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the, and, and always was, there's no, like, there's no nations, it, like, uh, it's not about the black and white. Some, no. you know, sometimes the black enslaved the white. And, the and, white and CP, the word Egyptian. slave, you know where the word slave comes from, right? Yeah, that's, that's from Russian. From, from yeah. the Slavs, so, from Slavs. white yeah. slaves. And that's yeah. a, the Arabian, the first right. one who had been taken right. slaves, the, the from white the folks. the Ottoman Turks. Yeah. Go that's ahead, true. CP, yeah. So it's not about a color, it's not about an ethnic group, it's about something that the human being always delight to abuse each other. Yeah. In the same mm -hmm. time, I want to ask people, you know, slavery of Islam extends to, no, to more than just owning a, a person. You know, slavery in Islam is about discrimination, everything. As an example, until now, in the year 2010, if you enter the limit of the city of Mecca or Medina, you, they will cut your head right away, regardless who you are. If you are not a Muslim, you will be killed in a second. They have a big sign that says, Muslims only. This yeah. is discrimination. This is a slavery. And in, the, in Saudi Arabia, if you are a Christian or a Jewish or, 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 or actually there's no Jewish or Hindu, etc., they will give you a book. Your residency, like the green card, it's a brown. The Muslim, it is white. Why? Because the Muslim, it's white because he's, he's, he's clean. And the brown one, because he's dirty. So even always the symbolic of dirty is the, is the black color for Muslims. Yeah. In, in the yeah. same time, uh, you know, how, how many ways of discrimination is exist in Islam? What if I call the Muslim now you are najis, which means you are dirty? Yeah. So the Muslim allowed himself to call you dirty, to call anyone dirty, and this is the, the, the discrimination. In the same time, we cannot call them dirty. Actually, we, as a Christian, we will never call that. But for them, they, they have a lot of forms. For, for the last 1,400 years, just in the year when election, uh, uh, they elected Obama president, the king of Saudi Arabia, he hired, the, for the first time of the history of Islam, a black imam in Mecca. Mm. First time ever in the history of Islam. You know, the Muslims, they keep saying to us that the prophet, the, the first one who was asking him to call for a prayer, it was Bilal. Bilal, Bilal yeah. he lived as a slave and he died as a slave. And the reason he was the one asking for the prayer, because he was a slave. Nobody want to wake up in the morning to call for the prayer. <laughs> Nobody, at that time, there's no speakers, there's no microphone. So yeah. the one, you can, I can show you tons of hadith. he said to him, he ordered Bilal to, to, to call for a prayer. Always he is ordering him. It was not something volunteer doing this poor guy. So well, well CP, don't you know that, that Satan urinated in everybody Bilal? else's ears? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> don't you know about so that? So they use a slave, and at the same time, they come to you, and they try to sell their product to you, that they are the one who freed the slave one. It's fact. Like, yeah. as an example, there's a different verse in the Quran that says that the Prophet said to be forgiven from sin, you, 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 you can free a slave. But the fact, he was promoting his business because one of his names is a slave seller. So, you know, like, like you know what? I tell you, if you want to uh, uh, be free from sin, you go and buy a chicken and slaughter the chicken. So what you need to do now, you have to buy more chicken. So, and he, he captured them later. So now he promotes the slavery business marketing because now you have mm. to go and buy a slave mm. and free the slave and mm. later we'll capture him again. So what a big deal. We have a lot of slaves. You know? Amazing. We want people to buy. So they, they, they try to fool you saying, oh, you know what? He is a freeing the slave. The fact, no. The fact he is a promoting his business, he wants more money. And, mm. you know, I, I, I will leave you uh, for now. And I know there's more, more callers. Yeah. Thank you, guys. God bless you. And God, God bless you. God bless you, you too, CB. Thank you, dear brother. Thank you.